remember back in early 2020 when I saw the first images of these gorgeous looking monitors pop up that were made by this brand I had never heard of before named Eve. I was stunned, like these looked so good, the design was clean and minimalist and the specs and even the price were great too. And a bit later they even announced a version with a glossy panel which was almost kind of revolutionary in the gaming monitor segment. And now years later I finally have one of these monitors right here. The issue however is that you probably do not have one of these monitors. I mean even if you ordered one quite some time ago, chances are you don't even have one still. Let me explain. If you go on reddit and search for the EVE Spectrum or as they're now calling themselves Doe Spectrum, you're gonna find tons of angry posts. Which honestly is nothing out of the ordinary by itself. Like you're gonna find people complaining about pretty much every brand and monitor brand on reddit. But this is a bit different. See, typically people are complaining because they're unhappy with their product in one way or another, but here, well, there are countless posts from people who are claiming they've never even received their monitor in the first place, sometimes even months after ordering it. And there are lots of people who wanted to get a refund, but quite a few are reporting they're still waiting to get their money back. Some people even accuse Eve slash Doe of being an outright scam. At the very least, judging by all these complaints, they are not doing a great job of actually sending monitors to people. Which, you know, is a huge problem for a company that's trying to sell monitors. I mean, take money, then send monitor is pretty much one of the very basics you need to cover, right? So why do I even bother testing this monitor? And I did test it properly, as I would test every other monitor, and I do have some thoughts about it that I want to share in a bit. But yeah, the reason why I even agreed to test this monitor is because I think Doe for once made the right call. They started selling their products via Amazon and B&H. And in my opinion, this is the way if they ever want to regain trust and establish themselves as an actual serious monitor brand. Now in the US, they're currently only available via B&H, in Europe they're on Amazon. And as you can see on the product page, the monitor is actually being shipped by Amazon. And I've also reached out to B&H and they confirmed that if you buy with them, they're shipping those products directly from their own warehouse or store. This is great, like this is no drop shipping, but Amazon and B&H themselves are in charge of all the logistics. So I guess it's safe to assume that you'll actually be getting your monitor within a few days when you're buying with Amazon or B&H. Before we continue, a word about today's sponsor, Bezos. The new Bezos Metal Gleam Series 2 USB-C hubs satisfy all your connectivity needs. Whether you need a feature-rich 10-in-1 hub for a multi-monitor setup or a speedy 6-in-1 hub for fast data transfers. The left side of the larger 10-in-1 hub houses two USB-A ports, two HDMI ports and one USB-C port to connect to a power supply. On the right side you can find two 10 gigabit per second USB ports, one of which is USB-A and one USB-C. There's also a slot for standard and micro size SD cards offering fast transfer speeds, probably even being limited by my slow SD card here. And you can connect your gigabit ethernet at the bottom of the hub. With a larger hub you can run an HDMI monitor with up to 4K 120Hz or connect a second monitor and run them both with up to 4K 60Hz for even more screen real estate. You can mirror the same image on both screens or expand your desktop across all displays. And the button on top of the hub immediately locks the casting screen in case you ever have to quickly stop the screen sharing. The smaller 6-in-1 hub offers fewer ports being equipped with a single HDMI port and no SD card slots but in return all three USB ports support fast data transfers with up to 10 10 gigabits per second. Check out the links in the video description to learn more. Back to the video. So you can get those monitors from major retailers now, which is nice. But yeah, is it even worth it? I mean putting all concerns about EVE or DOE aside, is this monitor even good? Well, the standout feature definitely is the glossy panel. The glossy panel probably is the biggest reason why people want this monitor so badly. This is the 4K 144Hz version and it's really the only monitor of its kind that you can actually get with a glossy panel right now. And after seeing it in person, I have to say that I somehow expected it to be even more glossy. Like it's definitely not full matte, but if you expect it to be just as glossy as a smartphone for instance, you're gonna be disappointed. If you put a smartphone right next to it, the phone really looks like a black mirror. The reflections are sharp and clear, but those panel isn't quite as glossy and the reflections are a bit more diffused. It still looks great though, colors pop a bit more than on a matte panel and the contrast really looks better than it actually is thanks to the glossy finish. Apart from the glossiness, 
So this is a typical IPS panel with a contrast ratio of just over 1100 to 1. But with some ambient light in the room, it looks a good bit better than that. And when you take a very close look at the panel, you can see why that is. The surface of a typical matte panel is just much more rough, which is diffusing light across a wider area, making the image look a bit more washed out, especially dark tones. Now, if this was like late 2021, when Eve first teased their glossy monitor, I'd probably be a bit more excited about the glossy panel. But yeah, just months after Doe showed off their panel, glossy QD OLED monitors became a thing. And I have one right here. This actually even is a second generation QD OLED panel. And yeah, side by side, the QD OLED definitely is more glossy than Doe's panel. But what's even more interesting, Look at how much darker the reflections are on the QD OLED on the left. When I turn up the light, the reflection on those monitor blows out, while the reflection on the QD OLED panel remains much darker. You can even still see the individual LEDs of the lamp on the QD OLED. So the reflection handling of those panel really isn't all that great. And that's kind of annoying when using this monitor during the day. This is full brightness, by the way, and you can barely see the member list of the Techless Discord server. So you wouldn't even know the Patreon supporters get a special role and access to the Patreon exclusive Discord channel. No, you can see that because of the window reflecting on the screen. To be fair though, glossy QD OLED panels also have their fair share of issues. If light hits the panel, you can see how the whole screen gets this hazy magenta tint, which messes with dark tones especially and lifts the black level. Doe's display doesn't do that, but its IPS panel has a much higher black level to begin with, so it's hard to argue that Doe's panel is really superior in that regard. Now, what I find a bit disappointing is that this monitor really isn't that different, after all, from other 4K 144Hz monitors. Sure, if you order the glossy version, it's a bit more glossy than a classic matte panel, but other than that, this monitor really isn't that exciting. Like, take the response times, for example. Blurbusters themselves even were involved in the tuning, so the performance really is great and about the best you can achieve with this panel. However, other brands have figured out how to do that too. This AOC monitor uses the same panel in matte and it has almost identical response times. And yeah, visually the motion performance is basically the same on this and on other monitors of this class. I really like though that the Spectrum gives us access to all 64 overdrive gain levels that the scaler provides, so you can really fine tune the overdrive to your own liking. All manufacturers should do that. However, it's hard to argue that you can improve the performance by much. Now Blurbusters also worked their magic on the backlight strobing mode. And it's very impressive what they were able to achieve with this panel. But after all, this panel still is using KSF Phosphor, so there will always be this red fringing showing up on moving objects. So despite all of Blurbusters tuning efforts, the backlight strobing isn't quite good enough that you would actually want to use it as your main mode for gaming. And when we're talking about colors, this monitor really isn't amazing either. Like it's basically the same somewhat decent factory calibration we're getting from other brands as well. You can find the detailed measurements as a free public post over at my Patreon. But yeah, the performance really is nothing special. Like though, didn't even took the chance to address one of the most frequent complaints with mainstream brand monitors, blocked RGB controls in the sRGB mode. It's just the same here as with most other monitors. So I don't know, I'm searching hard for anything that would justify recommending this monitor, like anything that will make this monitor stand out apart from the glossy panel option. I guess the clean and minimalist design is nice as well, but other than that, it's really a lot of the same we're getting from other monitor brands too. Don't get me wrong, this is a pretty good monitor and it can keep up with other good monitors of this class no problem. Which, you know, is, is nice. But when you factor in all the controversies surrounding E slash Do, I'm afraid that this just isn't good enough. I mean, I hope that Do can establish themselves as a reputable brand in the future, as I really like the idea of a community-driven brand that listens to consumers and gives them the features they want, like the glossy panel option or the clean design. But they clearly still have a lot of work to do. And I think relying on retailers like Amazon or B&H is the right strategy for Do, but it will surely need some time to prove that they actually are a functional company that can keep a good stock and also can follow up on things like warranty or service. And yeah, I personally think they should just completely ditch selling directly to consumers, considering the huge mess it caused. As the latest The Verge article about Doe suggests, the whole refund situation seems far from being resolved yet. I'll link that article down below, 
highly recommend to give it a read if you consider buying this monitor. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.